Hey everybody, we're all set to begin chapter four. Chapter four is titled Applications of Derivatives. And we are going to get into some examples in our next video. But for this first video, I just want to introduce some terminology that you're going to need in this first lesson. So a new term for you in calculus is going to be this word critical points. So let's define it. Critical points are the highs and the lows on a graph. Okay, no big deal. Getting a little fancier with our terminology, the highs on a graph we're going to call maxima, and the lows on the graph we're going to call minima. So maxima and minima on a graph. So I drew two examples here. This shape right here would definitely have a maxima or maximum, and this shape right here would definitely have a minimum. So we have a critical point here and a critical point here. And we want to look at some behavior that's going on at these critical points. So over here I have a fill in the blank. The slope will be blank at a critical point. So let's look at our slopes. If we come in here from the left, we can see we have a positive slope. And it gets a little less steep and less steep and less steep as it approaches the critical point. At the critical point, I hope you were thinking, the slope will be zero. And then as you leave the critical point, you're going to have some negative slopes here. So if your derivatives, if your f prime goes from being negative or less than zero to zero, f prime equals zero, oh, I messed that up, redo. If your slopes go from being positive greater than zero, there we go, positive, to being zero at the critical, then to being negative or less than zero, then you've got yourself a maximum. Okay, and on the flip side, if you have a minimum, then what's going to happen is your slopes will go from being negative, so f prime is less than zero, to being exactly zero, to changing over to being greater than zero or positive. So your derivative is going to switch signs and also be equal to zero to ensure that you've got a critical point going on. So you can see how we're applying the derivative to some curve sketching here. Okay, that's critical points. All right, the next term I need you to know for this chapter is something called inflection points. Okay, inflection points are defined as points on a graph where concavity changes. So let's talk about a graph's concavity. This graph right here, the shape of it, is called concave up because it's opening upward. Whereas this shape here is considered to be concave down. Now, how do you find the concavity of a graph? Well, the concavity of a graph is determined by not the first derivative, but rather the second derivative. Concavity is determined by the second derivative. Okay, so if your second derivative is greater than zero, positive. If your second derivative is positive, your graph will be concave up. And if your second derivative is negative, your graph will be concave down. Now that seems like a pretty random statement to make. This one not so random because we've been studying slopes and increasing, decreasing, and zero sloping behavior. The inflection points with the second derivative is a little out of nowhere. So let me make that more clear to you. Here's the reason why the second derivative determines concavity. Let's take a look at a nice easy graph here. So what I did here is I took a parabola, something like y equals x squared, and I'm drawing this as my original graph. Now, if I want to graph the derivative of this, I simply analyze the slopes of the tangent lines. So my tangent lines go from being negative slope to zero slope to positive slope. So to mimic that over here, so when x is negative, I've got a negative slope. When x is zero, I have a zero slope. 
And when I'm at a positive x value here, I have a positive slope. So the slopes go negative, zero, positive. And that creates this linear function. Now, if I want to graph the derivative of the derivative, or the second derivative, I'm going to do the same thing. Let me get some slopes here. If I look at the slope here, it's positive, positive, and positive. So if I'm graphing the second derivative, then I'm going to be plotting a positive, the same positive, and the same positive for my slopes. So here's that graph. Now look at the implications. f double prime is greater than zero. f double prime greater than zero. So second derivative always positive above here, above the x-axis. Look what that implies. A positive second derivative implies a graph that's concave up. Look at the flip side. If I had started my graph concave down from the beginning, then my first derivative slopes would have gone from positive to zero to negative. And my second derivative, being that all these slopes are negative, would have landed down here. So a negative second derivative implies downward concavity. So a little analogy to finish this off would be something like this. First derivative is to critical points as second derivative is to concavity. And we'll be using these in our next lesson. So for the actual examples of this lesson, please watch Chapter 4, Video 2.